Hi everyone, welcome to Being Youthful. I am Kim Beegler. I'm the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I am sitting here in the mill. If you are new to me, welcome. If you are returning, thank you for coming back. Um, there are chapters. I'm gonna say that real quick because I am trying to rem remind myself and you all that there are chapters. So if there are certain topics that you don't care about, just skip through them. Um, super easy to do on YouTube. If you're listening to the audio, not so easy to do. You just are graced with getting to listen to me <laughs> until you turn it off. Um, but in this episode, I have got some videos from inside the mill of me doing a little picking and carding and dyed in the wool fiber. I'm very excited. Um, I have a continental knitting. So continental knitting, I have took a deep dive into this. Um, and I'm petting my cat over here. So if you see a little tail popping up, that's why. Wish is here and she wants some attention. Um, I posted some Continental videos on uh, Instagram and they got a lot of feedback. So interesting. So anyway, I did a tutorial on Continental knitting Norwegian style, which is how I do it. Um, it's a little bit different than how some people continent on it as it turns out because it sparked a whole conversation on instagram um, from people around the world that knit continental different anyway super interesting i thought i'd put the tutorial in here it's also just its own video on youtube but um, i thought i'd throw it in here in case you want to watch it you don't have to go searching for it uh, i also am going to show you a little perk of continental purling norwegian style um, because I'm working on a, actually I have been working on a pearl slip on back and forth. Um, and if you are a continental pearler, it is magical. Of course I did a whole sweater and didn't do it this way. But anyway, I was going to share a little video showing you the perk of that because, uh, your yarn is stays in the same place. If you are slipping and purling continental, it's just this tiny little, tiny little movement. Um, anyway very graceful and beautiful continental purling this way is so it's like doing a little dance with your needles too anyway so I thought I'd show you a little video of that I am going to do a tutorial on the purling um but not quite today so and then I wanted to show you my works in progress so it's pretty quick um okay first off I wanted to there were no viewer questions so I don't have to, I don't have to forget to do that, I guess, but please ask questions. I love the questions, but I did want to touch on really quickly. Uh, there is apparently uh, a spinning wheel shortage, which I knew that there were some supply issues, especially with certain companies. Um, Lendrum, for instance, it's very hard to get a Lendrum double treadle spinning wheel right now, which is a wheel that has become pretty popular. Um, so they're having some supply issues, but as it turns out, I was in zooming with some of my people in my Patreon group and it's not just Lendrum. Like it is not easy to get a lot of spinning wheels right now. So it got me to thinking, what can I do? Because lots of people want to learn to spin. And I actually have been messaging with people that are having issues finding wheels. I am in such a like centrally located place of spinners that I, I get spoiled by the amount of wheels that you can kind of come across or probably fall upon. So I am going to, I have never done like consignment on wheels or anything like that before because it's just like a different element but I do want wheels to get out into the world so that people that are wanting to spin on a wheel can actually have a wheel that they um, feel like they can afford and such. So if you're watching and you live in my area and you have contacted me about consigning a wheel or are interested in selling a wheel at a reasonable price. So this is where I kind of want to, to be because what's happening is there's a spinning wheel shortage. You can't get a lot of the new wheels, especially the lower cost wheels. So some of the wheels that used to be used for $200, people are asking for to $600. I don't, I mean, I get it because it allows you right to get into the next wheel. But I also, if you have multiple wheels, I'm just going to throw this out there as something to think about. If you have multiple wheels, and you're not using them all and you have one that one or two that you are ready to part with maybe do it maybe find the interim price you know because um it's already expensive to get into hand spinning on a wheel and so with used wheel prices going skyrocketing it just makes it less 
approachable for people. I mean, pe some people just financially can't get into it. So anyway, what I'm saying is if you are in the area and you are looking to consign a wheel, potentially buy, just depends on the price point and on the wheel, um, please feel free to contact me via email, Instagram, wherever you can try to get me. Um, email usually is Email and Instagram are probably the best ways to reach me uh, and we can talk. I can try to consign it in the shop or potentially depending on the wheel, I could try to buy it. And then lots of these wheels I can actually ship. Um, so we can get some wheels moving around. There are also a couple resources on Facebook that um, are great places to go for looking for wheels. I will put them in the show notes because I don't off the top of my head, but they're basically groups of people with of people in the fiber industry selling equipment. Um, so I will put links to those Facebook groups. I think I can do that in the show notes. Um, I do have my guide. I have a free guide for buying a used spinning wheel and for buying a new spinning wheel. Although I now have to look at the prices of the new spinning wheels because I was a little bit shocked by some of the prices when I was looking. So um, anyway, Feel free to reach out if you have a wheel. If you are looking for a wheel, free for it, feel free to reach out also because um, I can certainly try to connect. But um, it was really disheartening to see. It was really sad and to see the prices of some of the used wheels. I was like, oh my goodness. I mean, sometimes I'm like, just because you can. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't obviously, we could go down a rabbit hole of this, but if you can, sell your wheel at a reasonable price, I think that's great. I understand not everybody can and getting that extra couple hundred dollars can be a game changer for sure. So anyway, that's where we're at. Um, it is also leading me closer to doing a drop spindle <laughs> online course um, because it is an approachable way you can get a drop spindle. Um, it's approachable way to start spinning. I, it, you know, it's 50-50 about whether you're gonna love drop spindling and it's gonna lead you into it, but it gets you in the door if you physically can't get in the door because you don't have a spinning wheel. So anyway, I'll get off my bandwagon about that, but it's a bummer and I'm going to try to do what I can to help. So reach out to me. Um, okay. Works in progress. So my nurtured sweater, I didn't bring it because next time I'm going to be wearing it because last night, so I picked it up. I'm at the collar, literally the sleeves are attached, everything. There's a little seaming to do underneath uh, the sleeves, but that's quick. Um, I was at the short rows and I put it down because I started other things, right? As we do. And that was not a great place to put the sweater down. I don't, why do we do that? Why? Feel free to comment. Tell me why you do that. It's like you get to a certain point. It's like, oh, I'm going to have to think about this. Let me put it down for a month. So I completely lose my, my momentum on it or where I know I am. And then anyway, so I had to, I was at a short rose point. It's not that short rows bother me. It's just, I don't know. So I'm at the, I had to rip out three times on those short rows before I finally was like, okay, read the directions thoroughly, follow the directions thoroughly, and let's stop ripping out. Um, so anyway, I got through my short rows and last night I started the first row of ribbing. So it's just a little, I think it's a three quarter inch rib up here. Sweater is done other than sewing in some ends. Oh my gosh, what am I saying? Putting in the ends and finishing the underarms. Hurrah. So I don't care if it's nine degrees out, I'm gonna wear that sweater for three minutes, my next episode, because it's a looker. Okay, um, also a very fun pattern. And when I'm talking about continental purling and slipping stitches, this sweater is the jam. I didn't do it on it, but it would have been a great place for me to be doing that. Um, anyway, my Sophie scarf. I am making progress. Um, but very slowly, it's a very small knit, which is why it's good that I'm doing a small one. But here is my Sophie. Um, it's not a very big scarf. I honestly don't even remember how many times I'm supposed to, there's like an eight row repeat basically, or every eight rows you do an increase. And um, I just sit down and start knitting. So, uh, but basically you just do all the increase and then you start to decrease. So there's not really a wrong way to do this but here she comes along this is in the utopia yarn that i am carrying in the shop dyed in the wool sustainable it's beautiful it's very squishy i am doing my sophie on i seriously y'all i can't see anymore i wear contacts and i'm sure lots of you can attest to this it's becoming a real problem um i think i'm doing this on it 
You all, I can't even say. I think it's an eight. I said in the last one. Am I doing this on separate needles? Anyway, these might be two different needle sizes. No, I'm doing it on a six. Oh my gosh, sorry you all. Okay, so I'm doing it on a six because it called for a four, I went up two needle sizes. I really like it, it's squishy, but you can see it's still, and of course it's gonna work more as I wash it and all that stuff, but um, it's gonna be really nice. So I'm doing it on a size six on the sustainable, beautiful. That reminds me, I have some new yarn to show you that I forgot to grab, so I will grab it in a minute, but let me show you. Um, my other, my faucet, which is where I, this is where, currently where I am doing a pearl and a slip stitch and the continental pearling is beautiful on this. So here we are, we'll show it to you from, look at how gore, I wish I could give you the squish factor on it. So there's like a little bit of everything here, right? Because we've got some mosaic, we've got some color work, we've got some baubles. All natural colors. This is the Rommeldale CVM that I hand spun that I'm working with. It is the squishiest of squish yarn. It is really, really spectacular. And I'm not gonna say, I, 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 I think other people, I'm sure other people have done this in solids, but I'm just gonna show you um, the pattern because I know for some people, it probably throws you a little bit when you see the pattern um, picture there. And um, because it's just very, it's very, you can't see all the detail in it that she puts into this pattern because I think the yarn sort of takes away from all the different things that you can look it up on Ravelry. Um, all the different things that are happening, right? The color work and that, for me, sometimes those speckled yarns get to be, and the multicolored yarns just get to be a little much because they don't highlight the pattern as well. But look at how beautiful you can see that pattern with just the solid naturals. I'm so thrilled with how it's turning out. Um, but I was like, you go to time out and get that nurtured sweater done. So um, I can work on this a little bit. Anyway, that's what I'm working on. The faucet is really fun because it is very chunked out. Like you don't do anything for very long. So it's a really fun pattern, well-written, beautiful. I just am liking my colors a little bit better than the multicolors that I was seeing, or maybe even just more, you know, the, her multicolors were pretty connected, um, which didn't hide, to me, it doesn't seem to highlight the pattern designs as well. So anyway personal opinion. You can throw it out the window. Totally fine. Okay. I'm going to pause for a sec to go grab those yarns. I'll be right back. Okay. So new yarn, this is from Junction Fiber Mill. So you, you, you all, I've mentioned that I'm not really spinning yarn anymore. So I'm trying to bring other small mills yarns into the online shop and into my in-person mill shop here, um, to support them. So this new wool is from Junction Fiber Mill. It is 100% American wool. They say um, ba, 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 it's fine wools. I don't think it says on here, but I think it was like Targi Merino. It's a blend. 100% American wool, non-super wash, because I won't have super wash yarn um, in my mill. But if you love it, I get it. And sometimes there is a point to it. I just am not a big fan, unless I'm knitting like a baby something. Um, okay, first, so here we go look at how fun that is so this is the alpen glow all different colors up in there just beautiful uh this one takes my breath away this is the seacoast this is right up my alley of all the things i love these are in the online shop now um this is lookout lodge um pumpkin patch pull back a little bit it's got kind of a peachy tone to it. There are some pinks, obviously there's some pinks in there. Um, and then January Nights, so actually I do have another one and I will show you here. I don't have it listed online, but if you love it and you want it, the only reason I didn't put it online, so I'm gonna hold, look at these. I mean, I love these different multicolored yarns, especially as an accent to a natural. Um, some of these would look absolutely phenomenal with the, um, and these are DK weight, DK weight. 
there is one other color. I don't have it in the online shop because I was afraid the colors were so like, you know, because of how this is spun up, no skein is going to be exactly the same. Uh, and certainly not in dye lots. I don't even think they have dye lots on it because it's just not going to be the same. So if you like it and you need a couple skeins, you think, or you're going to want a couple skeins, grab them all at once. But this other color I absolutely love, it is called forest floor. So here's one skein, lots of bright oranges and those different blues and greens. This is the same batch in theory, right? But this one actually has like some purples. There's not really the orange, but there's purples. Um, I'll show you another one. So it was really hard. I was like, there's no way I can put these up online and then have somebody get, like if you saw one skein, it would be really hard for me to, to confirm that it was gonna be that skein, right? Especially as I restock. So anyway, if you love any of these, you can say I love that blue one and orange one. Just send me a message, send, comment, send me an email or whatever. Uh, that one has some purple in it, which I really love. This is obviously a little heavier in the yellow, but still has that kind of bluey, beautiful color. I think there's another one. This is like the everything one. I think this one does have like a smidge of purple in it. It doesn't have that orange quite as well. Anyway, they're all so different that I didn't want to put them in that shop. But that's Forest Floor. If you're interested in any of these, feel free to message me and I can make it happen. Um, I just didn't want to disappoint. It's already hard enough to get colors right when you're doing online stuff. So, okay, that's the new yarn. It's very squishy. It is next to skin. It is fine wools. So let's go to some videos. I have got some videos of North Country Cheviot, which I had in Fiber Club. There is a little bit of it in white left in the online shop, but I dyed it in the wool. It's a bit fall inspired. You'll see that. Um, the Continental knitting tutorial is in here. Um, I, with anything you're learning, I say practice, 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 especially this. It's going to feel like if you are a thrower or even if you knit continental with um, the yarn more wrapped around some of your fingers, as some people do, um, this is going to feel less like you have, like you have less control of the working yarn. In reality, you have more control, I would say, but it does not feel that way when you start um anyway so we'll go through that and then i will be back and we'll wrap it up real quick and if you are listening to this jump over to youtube i will put the link in the show notes to the tutorial uh so that you can grab that if you're just listening and you want to watch and maybe start practicing some knitting okay see you in just a minute hey everyone we're here at the picker i'm just going to show you some of the colors going into um it's kind of not showing them super well but this is what's going into the picker this is north country cheviot which was in fiber club several months ago and i still have some of it in natural white available but this was stuff i'm going to turn this on and i think you'll be able to hear me just fine um i uh left a bunch of it uncarded just washed up because uh, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the rest of it. And so here we are, and it's feeling a little fall-like. And when you see what I ultimately am going to do with this, you'll understand my fall, um, my fall inclination here. So uh, I just dyed this up in different batches and I'm opening it up really well because in dyeing it got even more compacted out. And it was already pretty dense stuff. So I'm just giving it a good open here, making sure that stuff doesn't get all caught up because those teeth, it will get super caught up in there if uh, this, this fiber especially, but it's running really well. It's actually running better than when I ran it before, probably because the weather has shifted and it's a little bit less hot and dry. So. Anyway, I've just got a little bit left of this and then I will show you uh, what it looks like all blended up. Let me show you the last two colors here. I'm right behind you, I promise, I'm coming. So this is kind of the last of it. This is more of a red, this is more of like a purple. All of it was colors I kind of blended up as I was dying in the wool. So I'll finish this up and then I will show you all what the blended wool looks like. And then we'll go to the carter. 
All right, here it is all blended up. Woo! And I have another color that I am going to throw on the carter with this one if my plans go as planned, which doesn't always happen, but it's so pretty. Love it. Okay, well, so here we are. I added in the second color from our, uh, our picking video. And basically what I'm doing here is I am before, I think the last ones I was going side by side on stuff. This one I'm kind of co-mingling back and forth um, so that, because I love it, love it, love it, when colors blend up on my carter, uh, when they overlap. It's that overlap that I just absolutely love. I love it when I'm spinning top and you get to that point where the colors kind of fall into each other and blend in. That's one of my favorite spots, generally speaking, depending on the colors, um, to spin. So I have got this going and I can do uh, Okay, so you can really see how bright we are getting here. And this is all the different colors blended up. And you're starting to see now some of that orange popping in there. So this is just going to fluctuate between saturated in one color to a little bit of blending to a little bit brighter of that orangey color back into blending and then saturated. So it's gonna be a really fun spin. Nothing about it is gonna be the same, that's for sure. And you can see now how much more we're getting into that folly orange color. I hadn't, I wasn't gonna do the orange at first, but I'm really glad that I did. So it's just gonna go back and forth all through this. Um, the colors are gonna be different and no four ounces will be the same, that's for sure. Okay. Let me stop this because I just want to show you, pull out a chunk here and show you kind of how different it's going to be. So you can see without horrible lighting back here right now, you can see hopefully how different those colors are going to be. Sorry, I've got you bouncing as you go through. This is not doing the best job of lighting. I wonder if I use my light. Actually, that's perfect right there, isn't it? To show all those different colors and inside those colors, there's different colors. So it's just a fun, fun colorway, I think. Okay, that'll be in the online shop shortly. Okay, I get a lot of comments asking about or intrigued about the way that I knit. And what I, I knit continental, meaning that I use my left hand as my more working hand. And I think what really gets people is the way that I hold my working yarn. So when I am knitting Continental, and I should say I only taught myself to knit Continental a few years ago and I've been knitting much, much longer. So if you want to learn to Continental knit, you absolutely can regardless of how long you've been a thrower as, as you're otherwise called, right? As we otherwise call ourselves. So what's different about the way I hold my yarn is that I hold it just between my, for, my forefinger and my middle finger. And what that does, it allows me, I don't have to create any other tension with any other fingers. It's just here. So when I set up, I just am putting my yarn so. So it's kind of draped over my, my forefinger and then it goes in between, there's a little pinch. So there's no other tensioning that is happening. And really most of the tension is happening on the needle versus me having to tighten the yarn, which makes for a more consistent tension and gauge. Also, this is a faster way, which is why I originally taught myself to do it. So let's get started. I'm gonna get the first stitch on because it's always a little bit, it just doesn't show up as well. But you'll see that the way that I'm holding it, there's just this little bit of yarn here that you can see. That's where we're gonna pick up. We're picking up the stitch down here, or we're picking up the yarn down here. So we go in, we pick up our stitch, and we're picking up the yarn right in there. So it's just this little gap of space. So we're going in, we're picking up that yarn, we're going through. Now ideally, what you can do is you pick up your stitch, you pick up your yarn, you slide it off in one movement. So pick up your stitch, pick up your yarn in that little gap, slide it off. And I like to think of, don't move these fingers too much. You really want your forefinger to stay right there by your needle. And you're just doing a little movement just to give space to move the yarn off. But I'm going into my stitch, I'm picking up down here, 
sliding off. So ideally, it's like one movement. You really don't need your right hand to do a whole lot. So go in, pick up that yarn, slide it off. And I'm really, I'm mostly using this right hand finger to slide the stitches down. I have found that it is easier if your stitches are up a little bit closer, closer than when I would be throwing, I would say. So going into the stitch, I'm picking up from down underneath that needle in that little gap, sliding off. Pick up your stitch, underneath, slide off. Stitch up, underneath. And I love to give myself little things to recite. So come up with something that reminds you. So you're gonna have your yarn just resting. There's a little pinch there, but you see that when I pick up, the yarn just kind of slides naturally up between those fingers because you're doing that little movement. So the yarn's sliding on its own. I'm not having to do much tension. The tension happens on the needle. So I'll do a few more and then you can have at it in slide, whatever I go in, I go in slide. Ooh, if I can do it for you, it's always different when I'm trying to record in into that little gap slide into my stitch into the little gap slide. And you can just adjust your stitches as you need to as you're going along. I do find also that if having, especially when you're learning, having some extra yarn so you don't have that extra tension pulling from your ball does help. So just have at it. Try to keep your fingers close to that needle. I'll do a few more and then I think you'll be set to go on your own. Okay, here we go. Going in, picking up down there going in and there's just that little space that you can pick up so it just makes for a much better gauge. Your gauge should actually be your needle size versus kind of the human element where we are doing the tension ourselves. So there you go. And I will plan to do one with purling as well. Uh, just give me a little bit to, to find some time to film it. Okay, I hope that helps and gives you a little encouragement that you can definitely do this regardless of how long you have been a thrower. Okay, so let's talk about the fun of purling and slipping a stitch when you are doing Norwegian. So my yarn is being held the same way as it was when I was just doing a regular knit stitch. But so this first one I'm going to purl. So my needle Yarn's in front there, right? Even though I'm holding it exactly the same. And it's this crazy little dance to get it off the needle. Then when you go to slip, you just put your needle behind. Slip, look at that. Next stitch, sorry, popped at the camera there. I'm gonna purl and it is like this crazy little dance to get it off and then slip. So I'm really not having to do a lot of movement here, right? My yarn is staying the same place. I'm not having to tension it. Sorry, that's my hand spun there that is catching a little bit. And so it's just like this, I don't know what it is. It's, it's a little magical. So I just wanted to show you another reason to incentivize you to try to learn. And I will do a video on purling this way soon. Okay, onward. Okay, I hope that inspired you maybe if you're thinking about learning to switch up your knitting style a little bit. Um, I will do a purling one here soon. It is a beautiful dance. I mean, that's the best way I can describe Norwegian purling. It's just this beautiful little dance with your needles and it's pretty fun. Uh, I know a lot of people have issues with tension and sometimes, I think I used to, I don't really now. I think I have just with practice gotten better with it. And I think again, with this type of purling, you're gonna have less tension issues, but um, everything takes practice. I wanted to just mention, because I was talking about books and several of you did give some book suggestions. So if anybody's looking for book suggestions, go to last episode, uh, episode 80 in the comments. And some of you gave some book suggestions, which I appreciate. And I know many people have decided to go buy or go to the library and get When Women Were Dragons well worth it or the girl who drank the moon and somebody recommended her other one the orphan and the ogress I think is what it is so that's going to go on my list I'm going to take a little break and then I'll go back okay so this is so I tend to read 
just not necessarily lighter stuff, but you know, when I'm going to bed, I want more of a novel. When I, in the morning, when I'm eating or when I'm taking little breaks from work, I tend to read more uh, business books. I love business books, just love them. So this one is a mix of both actually. It's called Rest and it's not a newer book. It is by Alex Soo Young Kim Peng. I will put it all into the show notes. Rest, why you get more done when you work less. Um, so I just started this. I'm on like page 20 or so. This is not a brand new book. I'm going to say it came out in 2018. It literally jumped out at me when I was in our local bookstore um, because I'm really focusing on trying to, as you all know, I tend to not, you can probably guess that I don't slow down a whole lot. Uh, one of you calls me Isabella, you call me Busy Bee, which is so accurate, um, especially during the summer. So, and I'm really not good. I mean, the bottom line is I'm not great at resting. I mean, if I go on a vacation, rest it up. But when I'm home, it is really hard for me to slow down. And summer is worse because Mitch is out working so much that then it just like, keeps me going. So this book, and it's not just like, he's not just talking about rest, like go lay in front of the TV, no judgment. It, I like, I have a very hard time doing that. Um, I should practice it more, but he's talking about rest from work and resting your brain. Not that your brain turns up. Anyway, it's really interesting. I am like all in on it. It's super interesting. Um, and I'm hoping it will help me appreciate the importance of rest with work. So anyway, if anybody is like me and they can't stop, <laughs> maybe this book is for you. I'll put the name in the show notes. And I did crack open a new book the other night, but I'm only a few pages in. So maybe next episode I will um, introduce you to that new book. Anyway, feel free to give comments of what you have read this summer because I always love great suggestions. I'm on Goodreads and you're welcome to find me there. I think I'm under my normal name, Kim Beegler. Um, so books I've read are in there. I don't write reviews because book Goodreads reviews are like terrifying and not always very nice at all. <laughs> like, holy cow. Like if you read the reviews for Women and Women Dragons, uh, there were a lot of people that I was like, did you read this book at all? I don't know. So Goodreads is not my place for reading reviews, but it is a fun place to kind of, I don't know, keep track of my books. That's basically what I do. Okay. That's all I've got for you. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you learned something new, saw something new, got inspired. You all inspire me so much. I so appreciate you. Please don't forget to subscribe, to comment, to give me a thumbs up, give me some book suggestions. Um, tell me why you put your projects down. Why, why? And um, I look forward to seeing you soon. In the meantime, stay healthy. Be kind to your neighbors and make so many pretty things. Thank you so much. Take care.